Hi everyone, I'm Zach Weiss, co-founder of Worn and Wound, and I have something I need to get off my chest. I'm lucky, I know this. I get to see watches in person that are hard or impossible to find in the real world, even at boutiques. Because I get to go to industry events, I get to meet with the brands, I have access. I even got to handle an actual watch going to the only watch auction a couple of weeks ago. To be honest, it was kind of scary. But I'm not saying this to gloat, rather to highlight that there's a difference between access and experience. You see, when I get to handle a watch in front of a brand, perhaps in a booth in Geneva, with at least one flute of champagne kicking around my system, I'm in a state of horological euphoria, something akin to seeing the world through rose-colored glasses, where everything is potentially more beautiful and more exciting than it would be, let's say, on my wrist in my apartment in Brooklyn. This is why, after all the madness of watch fairs is over, it's great to go back and actually get my hands on some of the watches in the real world and live with them for a time, especially the ones that I found myself most enamored with. But borrowing watches from brands is a whole lot different than seeing them in a booth, especially when the price point is on the higher side, which is why I, once again, need to express my good fortune. As for the last couple of weeks, I've had the chance to live with and wear a watch from a brand I have been quite interested in for a long time. That watch is the Type 8S by Resens. For those unfamiliar with Resens, it was founded in 2010 by Belgian industrial designer Benoit Mintiens. The goal of the brand was to rethink how a watch displays the time while maintaining legibility. Their solution removes the hands in the traditional sense, utilizing instead discs and what is called the ROCS module. Standing for Resence Orbital Convex System, the whole dial essentially becomes the instrument of display, with nearly all surfaces in constant rotation. Each unit of time is broken out into its own dial. So the outer ring is the minutes index, which is read via large pointer on a rotating disc. Hours and other complications, depending on the model, then exist within this large disc, rotating around the dial as well, like little satellite dials, each with their own stationary index. A great way to experience this at home is actually to go to their website as they have interactive versions of each of their watches on each product page, allowing you to adjust the time yourself and just play around with it. It's conceptually like a combination between a carriage and a regulator. But while the description can be boiled down to relatively simple terms and the results look magically effortless, the execution is very complex. The patented ROCS module consists of hundreds of parts and is paired with either an ETA 2824 or 2892 base, depending on the model, which have been heavily modified. They actually drive the whole thing off the minute axle of the base caliber. It's, it's very different and novel in person. It's just the kind of thing that brings a smile to your face whenever you look at it, particularly the oil-filled models like the Type 3 and 5, which almost look like living digital displays. But the watch I'm here to talk about is the Type 8 which is the simplest model in the Resence line with just a minute and hour display. Using their ROCS 8 module driven by an ETA 2892 base, it features a 42 by 44.9 millimeter grade five titanium case. The lugs are little flanges on the bottom at about 20 millimeter width, but they are designed for curved spring bars, so they actually like flare out. This isn't a watch you'd have an easy time finding straps for outside of the brand's own. It's a two part case with both polished and satinated finishing, which both look great and they sort of sandwich together. The watch would be a perfect circle, but it's extended at top and bottom, creating a sort of hooded lug shape. From the side, you can see one of the more dramatic features of the design, the immensely domed sapphire crystal. It's hard to measure the exact height of that crystal, but the watch is 11 millimeters thick at its center, and the crystal accounts for about half of that. But unlike giant crystals on dive watches, it's not thick. Rather, the dial is domed to match, nearly hugging it. So much so, you can actually see the dial from the side of the watch. The crystal is also incredibly difficult to photograph. Just a side note there. In addition to the domed crystal, the titanium case back is domed. So while the watch is 11 millimeters thick, that's only from apex to apex. It also has no flat wall on the case side, rather coming to a point where the two domes meet. It's a thoroughly modern design that even feels a bit futuristic and wears kind of like a UFO about to take off, but more on that later. One of the other interesting aspects to Resence's cases is that they have no crowns, at least not in the traditional sense. Instead, the center of the case back is rotated in either direction, adjusting the time. The biggest benefit here is the symmetry of the case, making it wear and look the same on either wrist. There's also the overall aesthetic benefit, letting the lines of the case flow without interruption. 
The downside is that it's not very easy to use. There's nothing to hold, and turning it requires a decent amount of pressure as to prevent accidentally turning it. The best way I've found, as you also need to look at the dial to set the correct time, is to hold the watch with the pointer finger and thumb of one hand and sort of smush your fingers against the back with the other. Very elegant. This allows for it to be turned fairly easily. Though, if you need to cycle through many hours, it does get a bit tedious. And afterwards, you do need to clean some fingerprints off of the polished areas of the case. Ideally, this is a watch you would keep fully wound. Models like the Type 1 Round actually have a little flip-down lever to make this process easier. I'm also not sure if this is due to the case back design or other aspects of the case construction, but it only has one atmosphere of water resistance, which they call splash-proof. Not the most confidence-inspiring expression. Before getting to the dial, there is one other aspect of the Type 8 worth mentioning. Its weight, or perhaps lack thereof. With a strap, the Type 8 is only 42 grams. That's nothing. Weightless on the wrist. Of course, this is one of the great properties of titanium, a material I often celebrate for this very fact. But there are times when a little heft can be confidence inspiring. It makes a watch feel solid. Given the complexity and cost of the watch, I can't help but think a little more weight would have just made it feel a little bit more luxe. I guess that's sort of hard to say though. But regardless, when you look at the Type 8, it's not the case or weight that grabs your attention. It's the proportionally massive and ever in motion, if imperceivably, sage green dial. Just look at it. That soft green tone is like a cool breeze on a humid day, which we could use right now. Maybe it's just me though, as green is probably my favorite color. And of course, it displays the time at a glance. It might take a little getting used to, especially if you've never owned a regulator, but that will wear off quickly. Because of the concentric displays, you automatically read the minutes first. After, your eye hunts, but just for a brief moment for the hour display, which is located on the side opposite of the current minute. Yes, it moves, but it's never hard to find. It's then read as you would the hours on any other watch within its own index. The ROCS display is interesting, as it does eliminate hands in the sense of objects spinning above the dial to point to indices, but still uses graphic representation of a hand to tell the time. It's not reinventing the wheel, it's just a very clever way of executing it. And it really is enjoyable to look at. There's something about looking down at your watch periodically throughout the day and being presented with a different configuration of the dial each time that is simply special. Likely most other watches you own or come across do things in just about the same way. This is a different experience, plain and simple. This brings me to what it's actually like to wear the Type 8. I'll be honest, it's quite enjoyable if just very different. It doesn't look like other watches and it doesn't wear like them either. It's wide at about 43 millimeters, but not long at just under 45, and it's all dial. It certainly doesn't look small on my seven inch wrist, but the dial is the show, so I wouldn't want it to either. I did find it wanted to sit a bit off to one side and even at a slight angle, uh, perhaps because of the domed back. I wonder if a little more weight would have actually helped with this. Maybe a softer strap too, as the cognac leather provided is fairly stiff, pushing the watch up. The height and shape of the watch is really quite odd. As discussed already, it's not actually very tall at only 11 millimeters, but the dome shape exaggerates it. Normally dome backs sit more in the wrist, but here it makes the watch look raised up, like it's levitating, as does the knife edge. Hence the UFO about to take off. This is neither good nor bad. It's, it's really just weird and takes some getting used to. Aesthetically though, it's a total win. All that weirdness comes together for something that looks great. It's sleek and futuristic while also being minimal and stylish. It's not really a watch that falls into the typical categories of sport, dress, etc. But I don't feel like it would be out of place anywhere that isn't best suited for a tool watch. And it's certainly a conversation starter. One thing I didn't love about wearing it though was the rotor noise. It's oddly audible through the case and sounds, you know, for lack of a better description, kind of rough, a bit grindy. For whatever reason, perhaps the thinness of the titanium walls, it's quite loud and hard to ignore when you're in a quiet space. And this bugged me for two reasons. The first is the sheer serenity of the Type 8. It exudes cool and calm, which is, you know, interrupted by the rotor. And the other, frankly, is the price of the watch. Resence's watches are, well, expensive. They are an independent luxury brand through and through. Their catalog starts with the Type 8 at $14,500 and quickly sends over 20 k with the Type 1 and tops out just north of 50 k for the Type 2, none featuring precious metals or even visible movements. So while the Type 8 represents the entry into Resins at 14.5, it's far more than your average titanium watch or watch with an ETA 2892 base. 
So where does the cost come from? Typically on a watch at this price, you'll find highly decorated movement that's likely fully in house. That's not present. Perhaps some gold, that neither. Rather, it's all in the tech, precision, research and development required to make the ROCS system and other associated components. I think particularly the dial. Whenever I have had the chance to speak to Benoit, he quickly puts on his engineering hat and starts talking about microns and how even a change of color requires huge considerations as different processes affect tolerances. Resin's watches require an insanely high degree of precision with no variation to work smoothly. And I guess you accept that. You have a degree of faith in something you can't see. We're used to paying for labor in terms of finishing and things that are highly visible. Here, it just isn't. And you either appreciate that or you don't. But coming back to the rotor, while well, I can accept the faith needed in the tech and precision, certainly given the aesthetic result, other luxuries, like a silent rotor, should just be a given. How to wrap this up. There are watch brands out there with slogans about taking a moment to appreciate things. They tell you not to be so caught up in work, social media, etc. To paraphrase Ferris Bueller, to stop and look around once in a while. But I think the Resence Type 8S with its soft colors and clean dial, which seems utterly still, yet is slowly in motion, demonstrating the movement of time through subtle change, paralleling our own experience of the phenomena, is the best example of a watch that actually achieves it. Was that the goal? Is that worth 14,500? I'm honestly not sure. But like I said at the beginning, I'm just a lucky guy who got to try it out for a few weeks. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel if you can, we appreciate it. And head to warnandwound.com to check out the written article, photos, and plenty more great watch content. I'll see you soon.